Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Lord, we thank you for this opportunity to once again hear your words. Open our minds. Humble our hearts as we receive your message to us today. Pagpalain mo po ang bawat isang kabahagi sa music camp na ito. Pagindapatin mo po ang iyong lingkod sa pangalan ng aming Panginoong Jesus. Amen and amen. Praise the Lord. I praise and thank God for this blessed opportunity to speak in this music camp. I also thank the Lord for the ministry of the good man of the house, Apostle Arsenio Tanferiol, through which we were all made partakers in the work of God. And also my gratitude goes to the advisor of the Goodman Music, Bishop Ossie Kiliao, and the chairman of Goodman Music, Pastor Kem Kiliao, for giving me the sacred trust to speak to you in this music camp. Praise the Lord. Ang topic po natin sa um, seminar na ito ay how to develop the culture of excellence in music ministry. Please open your Bibles with me in Colossians chapter 3, verse 23. In the Amplified Version, Whatever you do, whatever your task may be, work from the soul, that is, put in your very best effort as something done for the Lord and not for men. This verse was Apostle Paul's exhortation to servants that they should always serve their master enthusiastically. Ito ay kanyang paalala sa mga alipin kung paano sila dapat maglingkod sa kanilang Panginoon. Mapapansin natin sa talatang ito na anuman ang ating gagawin bilang mga alipin, whatever our tasks may be, whatever it is that we have to do, dapat daw ay gawin natin ang ating pinakamabuti. Put in your very best effort. Paano daw natin gagawin ang ating mga gawain? Do it for the Lord and not for men. Ganito pala dapat ang attitude, mga minamahal, ng isang alipin. This must be the attitude of a servant. Notice how we as recipients of God's gifts, we are servants. Notice in the parable of the talents in Matthew chapter 25 verses 14 to 30. Nang umalis ang Panginoon, nag-iwan siya ng mga talento, ng mga kaloob sa kanyang mga alipin. Nagbigay siya ng mga talento. Kaya mga minamahal, this is how we should treat our gifts, our talents. Ito ay bigay sa atin ng Diyos. Kahit pa sabihin inborn sa atin o genius tayo ng pinanganak, ah, paglabas natin sa tiyan ng ating mga ina, eh kumakanta na tayo, still, it is a gift of God. In 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 10, it says, Just as each one of you has received a special gift, a spiritual talent, an ability graciously given by God, employ it in serving one another as is appropriate for good stewards of God's multifaceted grace. Faithfully using the diverse varied gifts, and abilities granted to Christians by God's unmerited favor. Kaya bilang mga tumanggap ng mga kaloob na galing sa Diyos, tayo ay mga katiwala lamang. Tayo ay mga alipin. We are just caretakers of these gifts. Ang salitang ginamit sa talatang ito ay stewards, tagapangalaga. We are God's stewards of the multifaceted grace that He has given us. At bilang mga katiwala, dapat pala nating ipaglingkod ang ating pinakamabuti sa ating Panginoon na nagbigay ng kaloob sa atin. We must give our very best effort. Beloved, that is what excellence means. Excellence is not being the best. If excellence is being the best among all the rest, then there can be no chance for each one of us to be excellent. Because there will always be someone better than us. But excellence is doing our best. It is being at our best. It is doing simple and ordinary things the best way we can. Excellence is putting our best effort to the things that we do, especially when it comes to the work of the Lord. Kaya ito pala ang katangian ng ating paglilingkod bilang mga alipin. 
we must do our ministry excellently. We must minister our gifts, our talents in an excellent way. Kaya ang iglesia ay lugar kung saan ang excellence ay sumasagana. Lagi na babanggit ng mahal na Bishop Art na sa loob ng iglesia ay may culture of excellence. It is true, beloved. As stewards of God-given gifts, excellence is the only way we can serve God. We can only serve God by doing our best. Anything lesser than our best is not acceptable to God. Kaya biyaya ng Diyos sa iglesia, hayag ang kahangahangang mga gawa ng Panginoon. Mula sa ating mga bahay dalanginan, sa mga gusali, maging sa ating mga gawain at sa iba't ibang ministeryo sa loob ng iglesia, hindi maitatago ang katangi ang ito. Through the able leadership of the good man of the house, the church as a whole has been and continues to be a spectacular showcase of the excellent gifts He has entrusted to His people. You see, beloved, excellence is a habit. It is not just a one-time thing. Excellence in the church is a way of life. Why? Because that is how we serve God. And we don't just serve God occasionally. Hindi lang paminsan-minsan tayo naglilingkod araw-araw tuwing may gawain. Eh ang gawain sa church, ha, araw-araw. Kaya lagi nating ginagawa ang pinakamabuti nating paglilingkod sa Diyos. That's why excellence has become our way of life. It has become our way of service to God. Kaya sa iglesia kahit ano ang kaloob na tinanggap natin, pag ginagawa natin ang pinakamabuti, we become excellent in it. Kaya walang malaki o maliit na kaloob sa loob ng iglesia. Kung ang kaloob mo ay pagtuturo, you do your excellent teaching. If your gift is in giving, you do excellent giving. Kung ang kaloob mo ay paggawang manual, you do excellent labor in the church. Kung pagwawalis ang kaloob mo, gawin ang pinakamagaling na pagwawalis. Kung ikaw ay uh, musiko sa loob ng iglesia, do excellent singing, do excellent playing. See the difference of being the best as against with doing our best. We don't have to be the best in the world or in the country. We do not have to be the best, to be the best to serve God. But we can always do our best. Hindi natin kailangan maging pinakamagaling sa buong mundo o maging pinakamagaling ha, na musician. Kailangan lamang natin gawin ang ating ang ating pinaka magaling. So when we say excellence, this is what we mean, doing our best for the Lord. Nakikita natin mga minamahal, doing excellent in all the things that we do is the only way we can serve God. Biyaya ng Diyos sa mga gawain, nakikita natin ang di kawasang paglago ng mga kaloob sa iglesia yan kasi ang excellence. Ibig sabihin, you become better and better than you did before. Notice that in being excellent, we do not compete with the brethren or with other local churches. Hindi mo tinitingnan ang kaloob ng iba. Parang dapat ata mas magaling ako sa kanya. Hindi yan ang pagiging excellent o pinakamabuti. Nakikita natin ang mga paglago sa ating mga gawain because we outdo ourselves we outbest ourselves every time we do not outbest others we outbest our own works at sa ganoong paraan nakikita natin na ang pangalan ng Diyos ay napapapurihan because in everything we do we do it all for the glory of God brethren the church is the perfect venue to develop excellence because we do what we do For the glory of God. Whatever we offer to God cannot be less than excellent. Hence, our service to Him must always be done in excellent ways. Just like in all the ministries in the church, biyaya ng Diyos sa inyong mga nasa music ministry, 
malaking biyaya na sa pamamagitan ng inyong mga kaloob ay napapapurihan ng Panginoon. Hindi lahat ay may kakayahang katulad ninyo. Maraming may gusto ng music pero ayaw ng music sa kanila. Napakalaking bahagi ng music ministry na ginagampanan ninyo sa ating mga gawain. Mag-isip kayo ng gawain na walang kantahan. Sa devotion may music. Kahit nga sa pananalangin natin may music. Ganon din sa midweek services. Kahit Zoom services may pag-awit. Kahit hirap tayong magsabay-sabay sa Zoom, hindi mabubuo ang gawain ng walang pag-aawitan. Sa mga pag-eebanghelismo, napakalaki ng role ng music ministry. Lalo't higit sa pagsamba, inilalapit tayo ng music sa presensya ng Diyos. Kaya napakahalaga na tayong nasa ministeryong ito ay maabot natin ang ating pinakamabuti sa paglilingkod natin sa pamamagitan ng music. Paano nga daw po yun, Sister Abby? Hindi naman kami mga magagaling. Aminin po natin ito, no? Real talk. Hindi naman lahat sa atin magagaling. Yung iba, nakahiligan lang natin ang music at wala pa tayo dun sa master level. Marami nga sa atin, pinaubra lang din ng Diyos. Sino dito sa atin, pinapaubra lang ng Diyos? Kung wala naman tayo sa church, parang pucho-pucho lang ang talento natin sa sanlibutan ito, eh, di ba? Pero tayong mga pinapaubra ng Diyos, hindi natin kinakahiyayan. Because as long as we are inside the church, we are sure that we are on the way to excellence. Basta nasa loob tayo ng iglesia, it is sure that we can reach our excellent best because we are doing all things for the Lord. So how can we develop the culture of excellence in the music ministry? Let me share to you the three C's to excel in our music ministry. First C is to covet excellence. Covet excellence. Notice in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 31. But covet earnestly the best gifts, and yet show I to you a more excellent way. In other Bible translations, it says, earnestly desire the best gifts. Sa dating Biblia, ang sabi, maningas ninyong nasain. To covet is to desire. The word covet has a negative connotation. To covet is to desire or want something that belongs to another. Kaya di ba sabi sa Ten Commandments, do not covet your neighbor's wife. Covet eh, no? But the Bible used the word covet with regards to the gift of God. You see how intense we can desire for the gift of God? Ang mga pinakamabuting kaloob pala ay dapat ninanasa. We should covet earnestly the best gifts. Excellence in the ministry, beloved. Whatever ministry we have received from God must be sought after. Ito ay ninanasa. Ito ay ginugusto. Sa paglilingkod sa Diyos, mga kapatid, dapat hindi pwede ang pwede na. Pag para sa Panginoon, hindi tayo dapat makontento sa paglilingkod na pwede na. Bagaman marami sa atin ay pinaubra lamang ng Diyos, pero hindi tayo dapat makontento sa ganitong kalagayan. Sa pasimula, maganda yung pinapaubra ng Diyos. But if you are counting years, if you are counting decades in your ministry, and yet you are still in that situation, hindi na maganda yan. Pag tumatanda ka na sa music ministry, pero hindi ka umuunla, di ka nag-i-improve. Parang insulto na ata sa Diyos yun, di ba? Bakit? Ang Diyos natin mayaman, sagana sa pagbibigay ng mabubuting bagay sa atin. Remember how all good and perfect gifts Come from God in James 1.17. Ibig sabihin pala, bilang ang mga pinakamabubuting kaloob ay galing sa Diyos, pwede nating itong nasain at, at hingin sa Kanya. Minsan wala tayo ng mga bagay na gusto natin dahil hindi tayo humihingi sa Diyos. Notice in James chapter 4, verse 2, it says, You desire but you do not have, so you kill. You covet, but you cannot get what you want. 
So you quarrel and fight. You do not have because you do not ask God. So when we covet, we can desire. We should ask God for it. Lord, may talento ako sa pagtugtog, pero hindi ako magaling. Lord, nakakakanta na ako, pero hindi pa ako masyadong magaling. Hingin mo sa Diyos na magawa mo ang pinakamabuti mo. Kaya dapat pala sa ating mga paglilingkod, umuusad tayo, nag-i-improve tayo. Dapat pala nagiging pinakamabuti tayo sa ating ministeryo dahil naglilingkod tayo sa Diyos. At ang Diyos nagbibigay sa atin ng ating mga pagnanasa. Notice in Philippians chapter 2 verse 13, For God is working in you, giving you the desire and the power to do what pleases Him. That is why in the church, when we are doing our ministry, any work to give glory to God, we do not settle for mediocrity. We do not settle for anything less than perfect because we have a generous God who can always give us the best gift. He is working in us. Paano natin masasabi na ang Diyos ang gumagawa sa atin? Kung lagi na lang tayo parang pinagpapasensyahan sa ating paglilingkod. Parang lagi na lang tayong inuunawa ng Diyos. Paano na lang pag mag-aalay tayo ng papuring awit sa Diyos? Lagi na lang nagpapasensya ang mga nakikinig sa atin. Imbis na makapagpuri sila, nagtitiis na lang ang mga kapatid sa atin. Nakakahiya sa Diyos yon di po ba? That is why we should desire to do our best in the ministry that God has placed us in. Desire for excellence. Covet excellence. Nakikita niyo mga kapatid, ang Diyos ay makatwiran. Pag tayo ay tinawag niyang maglingkod sa Kanya, sagana siya sa provision sa atin. Hindi niya lang tayo iiwan ng walang tulong na bahala ka na sa buhay mo ha. Binigyan na kita ng kaloob, bahala ka na dyan. Hindi. Pwede tayong magnasa na magawa ang pinakamabuting paglilingkod natin. Pansinin natin sa huling bahagi ng talatang ating binasa. For God is working in you, giving you the desire and, my end, and the power to do what pleases Him. God works in us, giving us the desire and the power to do. Notice that in our desire, we also need to do something about it. That is why God also gave us the power to do. We have the power to do our best for the Lord. Kaya nga ang ating palang mga pagnanasa ay dapat lakipan ng gawa. Gaya ng pananampalataya, ang pananampalatayang walang gawa ay patay. Ganon din sa ating mga pagnanasa. Kung nais nating magawa ang pinakamabuting pagtugtog ng gitara, pero wala ka namang ginagawa, gusto mong mag- maging mag- pinakamabuting estudyante, hindi ka naman nag-aaral. Para kang si Juan Tamad na naghihintay na lang sa ilalim ng punong bumagsak ang bunga sa kanyang bibig. Hindi ganun mga kapatid. Pag nagnanasa tayo na maging pinakamabuti para sa Diyos, we must couple our desire with our action. Pag-aralan mo ang instrumento mo, magpaturo ka sa mas may alam sa'yo. And it takes humility to acknowledge that someone is better than you. Di po ba? Kailangan ng pagpapakumbaba para hingin mo sa isang tao na Brad, Pwede ba turuan mo ko kasi mas maalam ka sa akin? O sister, turuan mo ko kumanta para mas magaling ka sa akin? Kaya nga nung photo challenge natin last week, nakita natin, sino ang mga mentor ninyo? Yung iba ang sabi YouTube daw. Bakit hindi? Hindi po ba? Wala nang bagay ngayon sa ilalim ng langit na hindi na ituturo ng YouTube. Libre lang. Kaya wala na tayong dahilan na di tayo makakuha ng course sa music. Bakit may YouTube University naman? Wala na tayong dahilan para hindi mag-improve at umunlad sa ating ministeryo at eventually magawa ang pinakamabuti dahil ang resources nasa ating mga kamay na, nasa ating mga fingertips na. Kung walang mas magaling na magtuturo sa iyo, may YouTube na. But if you can invest in learning, 
then by all means, do so. Take up music courses or lessons and classes if you can. Talagang pag-alalaanan mo ng halaga ng, ng pera, ng panahon at oras ang ministeryo mo. If you think buying the best instrument will help you play excellently, by all means, do so. Biyaya ng Diyos, may music camp tayo na ganito. Nagbibigay sa atin ng pagkakataon to develop excellence in our chosen ministry. So do not stop learning. Learning is a continuous process. I'm sure kahit yung mga magagaling na sa ating music ministry, hindi sila tumitigil sa pagkatuto. Lalo na tayong marami pang kakaining bigas. Be humble enough to accept corrections. Kaya mga kapatid, covet excellence. So the next C is control yourself. Control yourself. If we want to improve in anything, if we want to do our very best in anything, we need self-control. We need self-discipline. Self-control is the ability to regulate your own body, your own mind, your own thoughts. It also includes to control your time, to control your energy, your resources, even your money. Self-discipline is the ability to control and motivate yourself to improve, to focus on a task and achieve best results. So for the purpose of this seminar, we will use self-control and self-discipline interchangeably. So you see, beloved, in music, in playing an instrument, it requires an impressive amount of muscle control to play. Diba? May muscle memory. It requires mastery. It requires presence of mind, of alertness of mind. For you to be a musician, hindi pa yung good musician, hindi pa yung pinakamabuti, pinakamagaling, it will take you tons of practice and long hours of work, hard work and practice. Music requires a lot of self-discipline and self-control. Just like in sports, it requires mastery, muscle memory, muscle control. That's why ultimately, an athlete has to possess discipline and control over himself. Let us look what Apostle Paul says about disciplining our body. In 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verses 24 to 27, it says, Everyone who competes in the games goes into strict training. They do it to get a crown that will not last, but we do it to get a crown that will last forever. Therefore, I do not run like someone running aimlessly. I do not fight like a boxer beating the air. No, I strike a blow to my body and make it my slave so that after I have preached to others, I myself will not be disqualified for the prize. Notice what Apostle Paul had in mind when he talked about controlling and disciplining our bodies. First, discipline, self-control, means going into a strict training. If we want to be excellent in our craft, we need to undergo strict training. If we want to be excellent in our craft, we need to train hard. That is why we practice. We rehearse. Excellence does not happen overnight. It entails hard work. It entails training. It entails practice and constant exercise. Kaya walang hindi nakukuha sa sipag at yaga. Araw-araw, paglalaanan mo talaga ng maraming oras ang pag ensayo Remember, brethren, your um, performance or your output will only be commensurate on the amount of time of practice that you pour out. Kaya talagang pag binuhusan mo ng oras ang pag ensayo malaki ang chance na mas mapapabuti mo ang gawain mo. Pero kung pasundot-sundot ka lang sa practice, kung kailan mo lang feel, Huwag kang mag-expect ng maayos na resulta. Lalo na kung ikaw ay kasali sa banda o sa choir, hindi pwedeng sasalang ka na lang kung kailan ka free o kung kailan mo gustuhin. 
Kaya nga sa mga ensayo, mahalagang sumunod tayo sa takdang oras. Minsan, magsaset tayo ng oras. Pero sa totoo lang, late lahat ng isang oras, dalawang oras. Kaya bahagi ng disiplina sa ministeryo na ito, igalang ang oras ng practice. Commit yourself to excellence by committing yourself to the group, by being a team player. Ang success ng isang grupo ay nakadepende sa success ng bawat isang kabahagi ng grupo. To give an excellent song of praise, each member of the band or of the choir must excellently do their part. Kaya be strict with your rehearsals and practice. Do not play around. May panahon ng pagsiseryoso, may panahon ng biruan. If you want to sound seriously good, then take your rehearsal seriously. But if you want to sound like a joke, then joke around during rehearsals. Be strict with your training. Also, how does Apostle Paul describe self-discipline? In verse 27, it says, I strike a blow to my body and make it my slave. Ibig sabihin nito, mga minamahal, to strike a blow to our bodies is to deprive ourselves some of life's pleasure so you can do your ministry excellently. Excellence will demand time from us. It will demand financial resources from us. It will deprive us of our social lives. It will deprive us of sleep and rest and even recreation. So what do you consider as a strike to your body? What do you need to give up just so you can give and do your best in your music ministry? Iba-iba yan, depende sa tao. Yung iba sa sobrang practice, di ba? Sa sobrang uh, pag na nai-injure na ang mga kamay. Some of you gives up their social lives. Some of you gives up sleep. Di po ba napakahalaga ng tulog? Some of you gives up worldly recognition. Some of you gives up fame. Certainly most of us give up time to be with our families, to be with our loved ones, to be better in our ministries. But for sure, all of these things are a part of controlling ourselves, controlling our pleasures, controlling our time so we can devote ourselves to our ministry. What I also want to emphasize as part of discipline is controlling our emotions. A part of discipline is accepting corrections. How well do we take corrections or advice? Do we get hurt when our pastor or our leader corrects us? Pagka ba nasabihan tayo na, Uy, Brad, sister, medyo nag-off key tayo dun sa ano, ha? medyo hindi, ma- oh, hindi nakatono yung gitara mo, Brad. O, Brad, yung palo mo medyo offbeat. Pagka ba natapik tayo, e eh, nagtatampo na tayo sa ating mga pastor, sa ating mga leaders. Natitisod na ba tayo agad? Hindi ka na magpa-practice? Hindi ka na magpapakita? A part of self-discipline is controlling our emotions in the face of corrections. Ang pagtutuwid, mga minamahal, ay malaking bahagi ng ating pag-unlad, ng ating pag-improve sa ministeryo. As a part of the music ministry, we should always be open to corrections and constructive criticisms. What if you hear harsh criticisms? O yung sa tingin mo hindi na constructive? Paano pag nakarinig ka naman ng mga di magagandang comment sa pagtugtog mo o sa pagkanta mo? Just the same, a part of your self-control is to regulate your anger, your frustrations, or your disappointments. Don't let these emotions control you. Don't let these emotions enslave you. Don't let these harsh words that you hear get the best of you. Of course, people always has something to say about the way you do things. Hindi natin mayaali sa mga tao ang may masabi. But what we can control is how we respond to these things. Control your mind. Control your emotions. Your reactions. Wag agad matisod. Wag panghinaan ng loob. In the heat of anger or frustration, 
Sabi ng banal na kasulatan, do not sin. Sabi sa Ephesians chapter 4 verse 26, reflect on yourself. Mas maganda nga if you can ask someone to evaluate your performances every time yung magsasabi sa'yo ng totoo, kung okay ba talaga yung ginawa mo o kailangan mo ng practice pa. Be open to suggestions because we do not monopolize good ideas. We do not monopolize good performance. That is why accept corrections graciously. Beloved, control. Discipline your body. Control your mind. Control your thoughts and your emotions. Train yourself to excellence. And the last C, and the most important one, consecrate yourself. Consecrate yourself. To consecrate means to make ourselves sacred or holy. To sanctify, purify ourselves. It is to devote our lives to the service of God. It is to devote, to dedicate our talents wholly to God. Notice in Joshua chapter 3, verse 5, Then Joshua said to the people, Consecrate yourselves, for tomorrow the Lord will do wonders among you. Notice what comes first before God does wonders among His people. Consecration. Holiness. Bago pala ang Diyos gumawang makapangyarihan, kailangan ng mga tao ng Diyos na maging banal muna. We cannot attain excellence without consecration. Holiness, consecrating ourselves to God as music servants. This is what separates us from musicians outside the church. This is what separates us from the different worship groups that are sprouting all over the world. That is why, beloved, we should not just consider ourselves as performers. We are not merely performing. We are not merely entertaining. We are ministering. We are serving God through the church, through the body of Christ. Kapag ginagawa natin ang ating bahagi sa entablado o maging behind the scenes, we are not just merely performing. We are not entertaining the brethren. We are ministering. We are serving the body of Christ. Kaya nga music ministry ito, hindi ito show business, hindi ito entertainment ministry. That is why it is important to us who are in the music ministry to keep holiness a priority. We should not be exempted from prayer meetings, from devotions. No, minsan kasi napupuyat sa practice. Hindi na nakaka-devotion, hindi nakaka-prayer meeting. Minsan pagka may gawain, nagpa-practice. We must not exempt ourselves from listening to the words of God. Kung meron mang mas kailangan ng panalangin at salita ng Diyos, tayo yun, mga lingkod ng Diyos sa ministeryong ito. Remember, beloved music servants, that a dirty vessel cannot be used by the master. God will not pour His Spirit to a dirty vessel. A dirty vessel represents a life Wallowing in sin. Notice in 2 Timothy chapter 2, 21-22, If anyone cleanses himself from these things, which are dishonorable, disobedient, sinful, he will be a vessel for honor, sanctified, set apart for a special purpose, and useful to the master, prepared for every good work. Run away from youthful lusts, Pursue righteousness, faith, love, and peace with those believers who call on the Lord out of a pure heart. Ang Diyos pala hindi gagamit ng isang sisidlang marumi. Sisidlang may bahid ng kasalanan. Kahit anong galing natin kung tayo ay hindi pinapaging banal ng Diyos, hindi maluluwalhati ang Diyos. That is why we should not forget the church's motto in fulfilling our ministry. Ano ang motto ng iglesia? Holiness and service unto God. Hindi lang holiness, hindi lang service. Holiness and service must go together. Hindi pwedeng may maiwang isa dyan. Kaya sa lahat ng ginagawa natin, we must bear this in mind. 
That's why if we have a part in services, we consecrate ourselves first. Panalangin ang ating bahagi. Kung kaya mong sabayan ng pag-aayuno, mas maganda. Kahit sa ating mga rehearsal, sa ating mga nag fb live, manalangin tayo, tatandaan natin mga minamahal, being in this ministry is not a pass or an excuse for us to compromise our holiness. Alam nyo kung bakit tayo muna ang dapat mapaging banal? Dahil tayo ang nangunguna sa mga pagsamba, sa mga pag-aawitan. At kung ano ang espiritong nasa atin, the congregation can tell. The congregation can feel it. Either we lead them to worship in the Spirit or we lead them to sin. That is why a music servant, it's very important that we must be mindful of our testimony. Bakit? Kahit hindi ikaw ang worship leader o kahit ang hindi ikaw ang frontman, kahit nasa gilid ka lang, nagtatamburin ka, mahalagang kahit backup singer ka, dapat may patutuo tayo ng kabanalan. Because we represent a holy God. We represent a holy church. Hindi pwedeng tuwing Sunday lang tayo magpapakabanal and the rest of the week nakadaw-daw ang ating mga kamay sa putik ng kasalanan. We cannot serve two masters. Either we are serving God or we are slaves of sin. Mga kapatid, hindi tayo nakikita ng mga pastor natin. Hindi tayo nakikita ng ating mga kasamahan. Pero nakikita tayo ng Diyos. He searches our minds. He knows our hearts. Even our thoughts are naked to Him. We cannot serve God with the same hands that sin. We cannot serve God with the same lips that sin. There's no way we can serve God while we are dipping even our fingers to sin. Kaya pansinin ninyo kapag sa grupo may isang di lumalakad sa kabanalan, mabigat ang pag-usad ng gawain, madaming palpak, nasisira ang gamit, maraming aberya. Pero kapag sa grupo, nagkakaisa sa kabanalan, Mabilis, maayos ang lahat ng bagay, pulido. Nagagawa ang pinakamabuti ng anumang ating bahagi sa gawain. By consecrating ourselves, excellence in doing our ministry is possible because only those who are sanctified can be used by God to give glory to His name. Our gifts and talents when coupled with holiness can result to God doing wonders through us. Mga minamahal, covet excellence. Control ourselves. Consecrate ourselves before God. Tayo man ngayon ay pinapaubra pa lang ng Diyos. Pasasaan din ba at tutunguhin natin na magawa ang pinakamabuti nating paglilingkod sa ministeryong ito. Brethren, the end time is the opportune time to excel in our ministries. Di na magtatagal, darating na ang Panginoon. Baka di pa natin nagagawa ang pinakamabuti sa Diyos. Nawa, nasain natin. Bago dumating ang Panginoon, magawa natin ang ating pinakamabuti para sa Kanya. Shall we all pray? Ama naming Diyos, salamat sa saga ng kaloob na iyong pinagkatiwala sa iyong iglesia. Tulungan mo, Panginoon, ang bawat isa sa amin ay magnasa na magawa ang aming pinakamabuting paglilingkod. Lord, help us to discipline our bodies, our minds, our emotions, so we can give and do our best service to you. Help us to walk in holiness at all times, so that you can use us to give glory to your name. Lord, help each one of us to serve you in a way that pleases you. Maraming salamat, Panginoon, sapagkat nangusap ka sa bawat isa sa amin sa pamamagitan ng iyong mga salita. Ito po ang aming dalangin at pagpapasalamat sa pangalan ng aming Panginoong Jesus. Amen and Amen. Praise the Lord.